and welcome to today's worship on behalf of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, also known as the Old Town Church in North Attleboro, Massachusetts. My name is Pastor Kelly and I'm so glad that you've come to join us in worship today. Friends, please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here. And we encourage you to not only sit quietly and listen, but to wonder and to ask questions because faith and worship are action words. They're not things we just attend or watch on TV, but they're things that we actually do. Now we always begin worship in Old Town by taking a deep breath because it helps us to center ourselves and to quiet our souls and to become more present in the spaces we're in. So will you please join me in taking a deep breath? And now let's join together in our opening hymn, The Gift of Love. Friends, let's join together in a moment of prayer. Into your presence we come, O oh God, searching and longing for a few moments of stillness in a busy world that demands our constant attention. Breathe on us now that we might know your presence and your power and that we might be filled to overflowing with your abundant grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, today's scripture reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Now, a few weeks ago, we heard the story of Moses and the burning bush, when Moses was first called by God to lead the Israelites. Well, today, we take a little step back in time as we hear the story of Moses' birth and the incredible love that his mother had for him. As we discussed in Household Huddle today, there are good parts and there are bad parts to today's story. There are happy parts and there are very sad parts. At the time of today's story, about 1300 BC, 
There was a new pharaoh in Egypt, and he became very nervous that the Israelite population was growing. Even though Pharaoh enslaved the Israelites, he still felt threatened. So he announced that every new baby boy born to an Israelite couple was to be killed. But friends, don't be afraid. Because as we will be reminded today, love always conquers fear. If you have an Old Town Bible at home, today's reading can be found on page 61 of the Old Testament. Friends, I invite you to hear these words. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrews' children, she said. Then his sister said to the Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter and she took him as her son. She named him Moses because, she said, I drew him out of the water. My friends, here ends today's reading. May God open our hearts and our minds and help us to truly understand this amazing story. Amen. Friends, let's take another deep breath. And let's take a moment to center ourselves and to quiet our souls as together we listen for the voice of our still speaking God. Gracious and loving God, come to us in this place in the calming of our minds and the longing of our hearts in the stillness of this moment, speak, O Lord, for your children are listening. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. At this time of year, with Halloween just around the corner, there are lots of scary movies and shows on TV. And I know that many people find shows like that to be exciting. As a younger person, I always did too. But as I get older, I find that the world is scary enough for me. And I definitely don't need scary movies to add to my anxiety. Friends, to tell you the truth, there are a lot of scary stories in the Bible, too. Stories about hate and racism, misuse of power and slavery, war and injustice, beheadings and stonings and crucifixions, not to mention plagues and worldwide floods and the slaughtering of the innocent. 
Sometimes I wonder why we would want to read stories like these and what in the world they have to teach us. To be totally honest, many of us tend to skip over them entirely because they scare us or they make us sad. I have always loved the Mr. Rogers quote that says, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Though today's story of Moses happened because of the horrific choices of a self-centered leader, there were still glimpses of goodness that could be found. Though the story is filled with sadness and broken hearts, it's also filled with incredible acts of love. Folks, it's always nice to hear a happy story, isn't it? A story filled with love and joy when the sun is always shining and everyone's getting along. It warms our hearts to hear stories like that. But the truth is, life doesn't always work that way. The sun isn't always shining, sometimes it rains. And people aren't always filled with love and joy. Sometimes they're angry or grieving or just plain tired. Friends, for almost 150 days now, with the help of our Old Town Daily Email Devotional, we have been looking for glimpses of grace in our lives. And even in the midst of a pandemic, a contentious political race, and stories of racism, hate, violence, injustice, hunger, job loss, poverty, and all around fighting and societal unrest, we are seeing and experiencing glimpses of grace in our lives. Everything is not perfect. Actually, it's far from it. But our faith tells us that there is always love and kindness at work in the world. And sometimes it's the littlest thing or the simplest gift that can make the biggest difference. Whenever I think of the story of baby Moses, my heart breaks for his mother. I can't even imagine what it would be like to know that in order to keep my child alive, that I have to give it away. The unselfish love that Moses' mother showed was unparalleled. But if we look a little closer at the story, we see more and more helpers popping up. More and more simple gifts being offered and more and more love being shared. Miriam watches over her brother Moses as he floats in the Nile River to make sure that he's okay. And then she runs up to the Pharaoh's daughter, which puts her in a very dangerous situation to offer to get an Israelite woman to nurse the child. What a gift. What a sense of love. Pharaoh's daughter and her servants had instant compassion for Moses. And knowing that Moses was the baby of an Israelite, they went against the Pharaoh's orders to keep the baby protected. Again, what a gift. What a sense of love. If any one of those people had responded in fear like Pharaoh rather than love like Moses' mother, the story would have ended very differently. But the good news, my friends, is that love always conquers fear. So I wonder, what might you 
be facing in your life today that you're afraid of? What darkness do you feel hanging over the path that you're journeying down? And what is stopping you from feeling joy and happiness in your life? Maybe you need to stop looking at the big picture and look for the simple gifts. Or perhaps you need to set your fears aside and start loving yourself and those around you. Or it may even be that you need to open your heart and allow God and others to love you. Folks, the world that we live in is broken. And so many people in our communities are frustrated and afraid. We can't wait any longer for things to miraculously change. We need to remember that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus on this earth. And if we want to see the peaceable kingdom, if we want the world that we live in to be filled with healing and wholeness and grace, then we need to stop being afraid. And we need to start filling our world with love. Jesus always teaches us to love our enemies. Did you ever realize that once you love your enemy, they're no longer your enemy? Just like Pharaoh's daughter had compassion on Moses, even though he was an Israelite. When we love our enemies, then we open our hearts to have compassion on them as well. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, as you go out into the week ahead and as you face sad or scary situations, how can you replace your fear with a sense of love? Can you look for the good around you or the helper in the crowd or could you even be the helper in the crowd? Think about the simple gifts of love that you can share. Being assured that no matter what situation you find yourself in, love can always conquer fear. My friends, may it be so. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, will you join me once again in the spirit of prayer? Loving God, we thank you for this time to step away from the busyness of our lives that we might spend a few moments with you. Hold us in our fear, O oh God, and reassure us that we might have the strength and the courage to reach out to the world in love. Help us to identify the simple gifts that we have to share, that in so doing, we might share your love and your light with the world. Oh God, we also ask your blessing today on those who are in special need, those fighting illness and pain, those who have lost hope and are afraid, those who have experienced loss and are grieving, and those who only see the world as a place of struggle and frustration. 
Listen now, O God, as your children lift both silently and aloud the names of those on our prayer list and the names of those who weigh heavy on our hearts today. O oh Lord, we pray that you would hold us all safely in your arms. Open our eyes to see the blessings around us and in us. And in all that we say and do, encourage us to love even our enemies as we work toward the coming of your peaceable kingdom. All this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Friends, in just a moment, we're going to hear a gift of song by Jim and Megan Fennell. As you listen to it, I would ask that you think of the simple gifts of love that you have to share. And whether you normally worship with us or you worship somewhere else, I would ask that you please remember to support your local church. If you'd like to make an online donation to the First Congregational Church in North Attleboro, you can follow the link below or our address will be in the YouTube description if you'd like to mail in a donation. And as always, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your generosity. And now for our gift of song.
And now, my friends, the time has come for us to go back out into the world. Let's go out into the world sharing simple gifts of love as we work to conquer the overarching sense of fear in our world. Being assured that God goes with us each and every step of the way. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each and every one of you now and forevermore. And may God's church say, Amen.